Hey, the early 1900s called, they want their fit back. What? Yeah. Almost everything we wear today, except booty shorts and crocs, has been around for centuries already. But how exactly did these common clothing items and accessories evolve, and why? Well, in today's video, we find out. The historic origins of modern day swag. Starting off with these sunglasses. They seem like such a modern thing, but protective eyewear has actually existed since prehistoric times. The earliest evidence we have is the Inuit people who used thin pieces of walrus ivory to protect their eyes from the sun. And what are you wearing? They weren't really a fashion statement just yet. Uh, it's Ralph Walrus, you pedestrian icicle idiot. But a couple thousand years later, Romans saw the first version of sunglasses that were less practical and more of a status symbol. Unsurprisingly, it was Emperor Nero who had green emerald gems made into eyewear. And legend has it, those sunglasses prevented him from seeing poor people, which made bankrupting the empire easy on his conscience. I'm joking. 12th century China had similar shades made out of smoky quartz, and judges wore them to conceal their expressions during interrogations, and also looked badass like that guy from CSI Miami. In 18th century Europe, green and blue tinted lenses were thought to correct vision. They didn't. But brown ones were prescribed to civilist patients whose eyes had become very sensitive to sunlight. They would go blind regardless. Modern day sunglasses, unlike the previously mentioned, actually protect people's eyes from UV rays. However, Ray-Ban created the first anti-glare aviator-style sunglasses for, you know, the military pilots. But when they became available to the public in 1937, people ate those up. And thus was born the first ever New Jersey scumbag. That was all for glasses, let's move on to the second item on this list a streetwear essential, the hoodie. Well, hoods and hooded capes have existed since forever. And while a hoodie is not appropriate for a coven meeting, it is capable of starting full-on wars on TikTok. Is that my boyfriend's hoodie? Champion claims to have invented the hoodie with athletes and people that had to work in harsh weather conditions in mind. But the company also produced them custom for many high school sports teams. So how did it become a popular everyday item of clothing? Well, you might have seen this one coming. High school athletes started giving their hoodies to their girlfriends. And it was pre-internet time, so either Marlon Brand Award or Cheerleader did. And that's how this one became fashion. But more importantly, you heard it here, folks. Hoodie feed girlfriends have existed for as long as the hoodie itself. And I think that's beautiful. But moving on to the next seemingly plain article of clothing, the tank top. So pretty much the minute a dude turns 40, a tank top with a constantly moving coffee stain manifests onto its back and cannot be taken off, I assume, since he would never again be seen without it. Now, the name tank top doesn't come from the military vehicle. Instead, in 1912, when women's swimming was added to the Olympics, the upper part of their official swimsuits was called a tank top. Why? Because back then swimming pools were actually called swimming tanks. But the popularity of the tank top did not rise until guys started wearing them. More specifically, bad guys. In movies. In the 1930s and 40s, Hollywood movie villains did three things. Smoke cigar, beat wife, and tank top. That's why such a harmless, silly looking thing is called a wife beater in America. Okay, next one. The fourth essential piece of clothing we'll talk about is the t shirt. Or more specifically, the evolution of the t shirt. In the 19th century, the all in one underwear flannel piece known as the union suit was separated into two pieces what we know today as the long johns and the undershirt. But a major inconvenience that came with the first undershirts was the buttons falling off, because men can't sew. So in the early 20th century, Cooper Underwear Company created the Bachelor Undershirt. No safety pins, no buttons, no needle, no thread. Which is the best slogan ever. And by removing the buttons, they removed the need for women. It wasn't until Marlon Brando wore it as a casual top that it transitioned from underwear to bad ass. He is also credited with making jeans popular and starting the trans mask lesbian movement. Basically the founding father of menswear, this dude. Okay, last thing on the list, the bra. We already know its predecessor is the corset. But how did the transition from corset to bra happen? Well, all it took was two handkerchiefs, one frustrated little lady, and a global war. During World War I, women were encouraged to refrain from buying new corsets because the metal was needed for making weapons. Oh yeah, enough metal was collected to make two whole battleships. But besides the weapons of mass breast, 
Stinction, haha. <laughs> what completely finished off the corset was Carrie Crosby, who had gotten frustrated with her corset poking through her gown. So with the help of a maid, she turned two handkerchiefs and a pink ribbon into a modern day bra. And listen to this, she eventually sold it to Warner Brothers Corset Company for a little less than 50k in today's money. Looney tunes, more like booby tubes, haha. <laughs> Now I do want to say welcome to all the new subscribers. You can get comfy, get a snack. Thank you for watching. The last COVID got insane attention. And I know, I'm scared too. I will now let fame change me completely and abuse my powers. Okay, bye.